Today we'll be learning Amazon Inspector vulnerability management at scale. So right in the center is Amazon Inspector that allow us to do vulnerability management. And what are the targeted resources? So the first targeted resource that's available is going to be over here, which is the Lambda function. So Lambda is a form of serverless service. And what it does is allow you to just simply put your code, Python, Node.js, and so on, and you can simply execute on it. That's perfect, that's wonderful. And what Amazon Inspector can do here is to do a package scan against the layer, for example, or inside the Lambda function, and also in terms of code vulnerability, ensuring that it is using secure coding practices. Next supported resource type is going to be your EC2 virtual server. So in this case, Amazon Inspector supports just that. So both Linux as well as your Windows operating systems on EC2 virtual servers are supported. And for Linux, you get deep package inspection on top of operating system vulnerability detection that's available for both Linux and Windows. The next supported resource over here is going to be your Elastic Container Registry. And this is the part where you have your container images that are then being uploaded or pushed over into ECR. And we are able to support detection of vulnerabilities in those images and at the same time, identifying those that are in production or in running across your EKS pods as well as your ECS tasks. And finally, this is a brand new feature where we're able to integrate directly with GitHub or GitLab and scan across those code repositories and help you identify vulnerabilities. And I have already created a tutorial for that, so go ahead and watch that video right here. Now, without further ado, let's start hacking. Sorry, I mean scanning. So right in front of us, we're on an AWS console, and this is the inspector service page. The dashboard, the summary gives us an overview of what's going on. So you can see right here, we have the environment coverage. So this was exactly what I was sharing with you. So we have EC2 virtual service with container repository. So this is your elastic container registry. You have your Lambda functions where you can simply place code into it and start executing. And there's a code repository, it's like your GitHub, GitLab, so we can see the coverage right here. And on the right side, we can see those critical findings. And this is the part where you typically want to prioritize because critical findings means it is going to allow your best friend forever, Mr. Hacker Loy, to very easily take advantage of those code vulnerabilities and be able to gain access into those workloads. So you typically want to remediate that quickly. And if we scroll down further, what's really interesting here is the findings with exploit available and fix available. So here you can see there are findings where they're public exploit, meaning it's very easy to figure out where to get those malicious code and then insert or inject that over into your workload and gain access to those compute environment. And there are fixes that are available, okay, that are associated with the findings in your environment. So we have risk-based remediation and so on and so forth. So this is a summary page that you can easily work on your most critical and prioritized findings. Now let's go over to a simple finding, for example, platform and if I clicked onto it, you can see here we have an expansion and it says the following. This is the account ID, critical severity, package vulnerability created at, and you can see the affected packages. So all this information is directly available for you the moment you click on each of these findings. And of course, if I go over into say a vulnerable package, I clicked onto it again. And what's really interesting here is something called inspector score and vulnerability intelligence. So this is a part when inspector is coming in and giving further insights into, hey, is this specific vulnerability, is it going to be accessible? Is it going to be reachable, All right? So if you look at some of the EC2 ones, so for example, if I hit over here, we have like package vulnerabilities, we have the resource in question, I'll click onto one of the resources here. So you can see here, severity high, package vulnerability. I select onto the inspector score and vulnerability intelligence. So when I scroll down further, you can see here, all right, we have the CVSS inspector, all right, and then if I scroll down, further down, so we can see the vulnerability intelligence, and then we can click onto it. So these are the specific MITRE techniques that are available for us, and it's mapped automatically so that we know exactly what is going on with this specific vulnerability, okay? And then you have here, right at the bottom, this is from Record Future. We have the vendor severity. We have the recently linked to penetration testing tools. So you can see right here, tenable.com slash plugins, Nessus 248139. Next up, we have, for example, by vulnerability. So you can select onto it, and you can see that, okay, maybe some vulnerabilities are being repeatedly present within the environment. And you can filter, say, for example, specific vulnerabilities that are appearing as critical across numerals of your resources, then you can easily click onto it 
in this situation, we have unsanitized input is run as code. So I can click onto that. It says following, right? Running scripts generated from unsanitized inputs and so on and so forth. And if I scroll down further, we can see the following. So we have the impacted resource. So this is called vulnerability. And then we can see this is a, for example, in this situation, we have the code security integration. And then this is a project. And we can see there's code vulnerability associated with it. All right, so we can click onto it and you can see the following situation. There's a vulnerable code.py and the vulnerable location is right here. All right, written pickle.loads, pickle data, arbitrary code execution risk. Moving on, we have by instance. So if you have numerous EC2 instances in your environment, you can select onto that specific instance and you can see all the vulnerabilities within that instance. So in this situation, we have like CVE 20537995. I can click onto one of that and this is a package vulnerability. I can click onto inspector score and vulnerability intelligence. And if I scroll down further, you can see right here, all right, there's vendor severity, there's evidence rule recently linked to penetration testing tools. Okay, so this is another example where we can get further insights into each of the identified vulnerability in your environment. So moving on, we have container images. So right here, these are all of those that are pushed over into the Elastic Container Registry. So say for example, I have the first one. If I clicked onto it, if I scroll down further, you can see the following, by image, platform, end of life. So someone has pushed Alpine Linux 315. And this is end of life and it's critical vulnerability. We would not want this to be deployed in a production environment, in any environments, because it's gonna be that easy to take advantage and gain access to those workloads. And the second one you see right here, click onto the image. And if you see over here, I have a package finding of one high and four medium. If I scroll down further, you can see right here, we have CVEs, all right? So this package vulnerability. So if I clicked onto it, you can see right here, inspector score and vulnerability intelligence. If I scroll Scroll down further, all right, there is a new malware, all right, XZUtils, recently linked to penetration testing rules. I can click onto it, three sightings on two sources, Tenable, GitHub, so you can see over here, we have github.com, and we have those evidences for you. So it makes it easier for you to prioritize on the different findings they're detected. So for example, over here, I am in Elastic Container Registry, and I have a specific repository here, which is Hacker Loy. And if I select over into say view push commands, and this are the instructions here that we can simply copy and paste it over into our say development environment. And this is when we're pushing a specific image over into say ECR. This are the authentication token, authenticate your Docker client, your registry. So we use the command lines here, send it over, and then we'll be able to push the image into ECR, which then triggers the inspector scan. So the first thing I need to do is go in and copy the first line of instructions. Then I hit over into an EC2 that I have running over here. And this is the part where I go in and paste the instruction, hit enter on that. So we get the login. All right, your password will be stored encrypted and so on and so forth. So login has now succeeded. So now what I would do is navigate over into my home directory and the LS and I'll do a cat docker file. So we have a Debian 11 slim. So once we have this, all I have to do is do a docker followed by boo dash t hacker loy dot hit enter on that. So now we're building the image and once the image has been built, all we have to do is to tag it and then push it over. So all we have to do right now is go ahead and run the following instructions. So we have docker tag hacker loy and so on, hit enter on that. And then after which we just have to do a docker push. So let's go ahead and copy that, paste it over here, hit enter on this. And now we are pushing, all right, over into ECR. And then once that is done, all right, you can see right here, latest digest, char256 and so on and so forth. So it's now been successfully pushed over into the Elastic Container Registry. So now I am back into Elastic Container Registry. I'll just go ahead and click onto a refresh. And you can see right here, we have one more that has been pushed over into with the image tag of latest. I can click onto it right here. You can see the following, right? We have artifact image repository hack alloy. And you can see the following situation. Status is active. Continuous scan is selected for image. And when I hit over to Amazon Inspector, you can see right here, we have the repository of Hacker Loy, and we have the following finding, and the H was a minute ago, ever since we pushed this specific image over into ECR.
Next up, we have Lambda function, which has two options for us. The first one is package vulnerability, and the second one is going to be on code security. So if you see over here, we have vulnerable package, you can click onto that, and you can see the package type zip, Python 310. And if I scroll down further, you have the finding. So this is a package vulnerability. I can click onto it and it states the following over here. So we have the severity critical package vulnerability, inspector score and vulnerability intelligence. So if I scroll down further, you can see this historically linked to penetration testing tools. Additionally, if you look at the function names, we have excessive privileges, credentials, exfiltration, and vulnerable Python code. So if I clicked onto the first one, excessive privileges over here, right? So you can see there were the following of one finding. I click onto improper privilege management and it will highlight to us exactly where the code is. So in this situation, someone is attempting to run os.set user ID as root as part of running the Lambda function. So in this situation, this is a vulnerability. Likewise, we're able to detect credentials. So if I click on the credential exfiltration function, and if I scroll down further, you can see the following of AWS credentials logged. So if I scroll down here, you can see the following, logging.info access key. So this is the part where this is going to be present inside, say for example, CloudWatch logs, and we'll be able to see those possible access key details if it's not being redacted. And finally, we have vulnerable Python code. So if I select onto it, you can see right here, I click onto the finding, and we have the output.os.system ping-c4. And the good news about this is that there are remediations available for us. So in this situation, why are we recommending the following fix? Incorporating user supply input into Python, subprocess, OS, and command functions without proper validation, and so on and so forth. And you can see the one in green is the one is suggested to you to fix the code so it's much more secure. Now, one of the key features of Amazon Inspector is going to be on its vulnerability database search. So this is the part where if you're waking up in the morning and there's a new CV being released and you need to know across your environment which of your workloads contain this CVE, this is the place where it can go to. So say for example, I have the following CVE here. I can go over into vulnerability database search. I paste it here, I click search, and you can see right here, this is a critical or a severity, and if I click onto view findings, then it will immediately highlight to us, hey, this specific finding is appearing across all of your resources in this specific, say, package vulnerability. So you can use this to quickly search up on things. So if you search on it, and if you wanna read more like vulnerability intelligence on it, it's all directly available to the vulnerability database search. Once again, I hope you've learned something useful, something valuable, so hit the like button, smash it in fact, drop a comment right below, let me know how it goes.